now we are ready for related rates problems. And so um, the idea of a related rates problem is to um, compute the rate of change of one quantity in terms of another that might be more easily measured. And um, the procedure is to find an equation that relates um, the two quantities, and then we're going to take the derivative with respect to time, and we'll have to use chain rule along the way. So um, the best way for me to teach this to you is to go through some examples and you sort of get a feel for it. However, in your textbook on page um, 247, there's a step-by-step -step process of, uh, it, it, it is a problem-solving process that goes through um, related rates problems um, with a, with a list of steps you can follow. So you might want to refer to that, plus there are several good examples in the book, different from what I'm doing here on this worksheet. So we have eight problems. It will probably take two videos to get through this just so that it doesn't become too, too long. Um, let us just begin. The um, first one says, each side of a square is increasing at a rate of six centimeters per second. At what rate is the area of the square increasing when the area of the square is 16 square centimeters? So, what we have here is a square that is increasing in size. And so, uh, we're all from, this is number one, we're all familiar with a square, I think. And so, what we know about a square is that the length and the width are the same side. So, there's a square. And we have this situation where the side of the square is increasing at a certain rate. When you hear a rate... That is a derivative. So when they say each side of a square is increasing at a rate of six centimeters per second, that means the rate of change of the side, how much dx is changing, is equal to six centimeters per second. Okay. And then they ask us, um, at what rate is the area of the square increasing? Let's just write that down in notation. Um, the rate of the area is dAt, da dt. At what rate is the area changing with respect to time? Um, and at what moment in time? Okay, so, the, so calculus is um, math in motion. And so we're not just saying for all time, we're saying at the point in time when the area is equal to 16 square centimeters. Okay, so we have this this square that's increasing. So we know the rate of change of the length of the side. They're asking us, what is the rate of change or the derivative when the area um, of the area? So we need a formula that will tie these elements together. And so area of a square is what we're gonna use. So area of a rectangle in general is length times width. But since the length and the width are the same, the area of a square is just gonna be x squared. So this is a good, um, formula that will relate them. Now, the procedure is to take the derivative with respect to time um, of both sides of this equation. Now, keep in mind that area is a function of time and um, the length of the side x is also a function of time. So, when we take this derivative, we will have to keep in mind chain rule. So, let's take the derivative with respect to time of both sides of this equation. So, what we get on the left is dA dt, dA dt is equal to, um, outside function is power rule 2x, chain rule inside function times the derivative of x with respect to time is dx dt. So this is what we're going to use. Now, what we, what we can do to calculate dA dt is figure out what x is. Uh, how will we know what x is at this moment in time? Well, they gave us this information. They said the area is 16 square centimeters. So what is the formula for area? Area is x squared, right? So 16 centimeters squared is equal to x squared. We can take the square root of both sides and get that x is 4 centimeters at this point in time. So at this moment in time, d a d t. The change of the area with respect to time is the number 2 times what x is at this moment in time, which is 4 centimeters, times the rate of change of the side. How big is the side changing with respect to time? That was given information. They told us that was 6 centimeters per second. 6 centimeters per second. 
So what we want to keep in mind here is um, the units. If you write your units down, it's going to tell you if you're doing the right thing or not. Area is square something, right? So when we do this, we'll have 4 times 2, which is 8, times 6. This is 48 square centimeters per second. That makes me feel like, yes, I am doing this right because the rate of change of area, square centimeters with respect to time, seconds, this is a good um, answer for that right there. Okay, the second exercise on our sheet is just, is just um, practice taking derivatives um, with respect to time and plugging in numbers. So there's, it's not a pro, uh, actual word problem, it's just some practice. So let's do number two together. Number two says, um, it says suppose that we have this equation. Two, suppose that we have y is equal to the square root of two x plus one where x and y are functions of t. Okay, so that means we have to use chain rule when we take a derivative. Um, a says if dx dt, the rate of change of x with respect to t is three, and um, x is four, what is dy dt? All right, and then for part B, they ask us, they tell us that if dy dt, the rate of change of y with respect to t is five, and x is 12, what is dx dt? So this is not a practical problem, but it is some good practice um, take, using chain rule and taking derivatives. So let's go ahead with this. Y is equal to this. So if we take the derivative with respect to time of both sides of this equation, it will look like this. D dt of this side, d dt of this side. Okay, well the derivative with respect to time of y is dy dt. Okay, um, if I'm gonna take this derivative, I like to rewrite radicals as fraction powers. So the derivative with respect to time of the right side of this equation is the power rule, one half times two x plus one to the negative one half, one half minus one, times the derivative of the inside. This has a couple of chain rules going on. Times the derivative of the inside, which is um, the derivative of two x is two, the derivative of one is zero, so we just have two, times the derivative of x with respect to t. So dx dt. So that had a couple of chains in there. Okay, so this is basically the formula we have. 2 times 1 half is 1. So I'm just going to simplify this. We know this is 1 times dx dt. Okay, Oops, that should be a dt. So this is the formula. We're just going to plug it in right here for a. It says find dy dt. All right, dy dt is equal to uh, dx dt, they told us in this case it's three, times this, the negative one half, which is one over the square root of two times x plus one. And they said in this instance, x is four. So this is gonna be three over the square root of two times four is, not, is eight plus one, three over the square root of nine, three over three, so in this case, dy dt is one. We don't have units with this. This was just practice using derivatives. Over here, we're gonna use the same formula. It says find dx dt, okay, when dy dt is five, okay, something. Five is equal to dx dt over, I'm gonna go ahead and make this in the denominator, the square root of two x plus one. Okay, so really dx dt if I multiply both sides by the square root of 2x plus 1 is 5 times the square root of 2x. In this instance is 12 plus 1. This is 5 times the square root of 24 plus 1, the square root of 25. 5 times 5 um, is 25 is what dx dt is, is um, equal to in that instance. So that's just practice derivatives. 
Let's go ahead and do number three. This is back to a practical problem, but it's not too hard. We're stepping ourselves into the more complicated ones. So number three says a spherical snowball with an outer layer of ice melts so that the volume of the snowball decreases at a rate of two cubic centimeters per minute. How fast is the radius changing when the diameter of the snowball is 10 centimeters? So um, even though many of you are from Florida and maybe have not been in snow, you have seen snow on TV and maybe perhaps, hopefully most of you have been able to have been in a snowball fight because it's a lot of fun. But you can imagine uh, snow, it melts just like ice melts, you know, this is what we have going on here. We've got a snowball and um, the outer layer of ice is melting so that the volume, the, um, the, how big it is, not area, not just surface area, but it's a three dimensional, the volume of the snowball is decreasing at a rate of two cubic centimeters per minute how fast is the radius changing when the diameter of the snowball is 10 centimeters? This calls for drawing a little picture. So let's draw ourselves a picture. And so we've got a snowball here and we're just gonna, it's, we're gonna, it says it's spherical. So we'll say it's in the shape of a, of a ball, even though my picture doesn't look like it's a perfect sphere. Maybe I'll try better. So one more. Here is a sphere, three-dimensional, okay. So this is um, the radius, so this is like the back part of the, of the sphere. This is the radius right here of the center, okay. So it mentions two things. It mentions the radius and the volume, how um, the rate of change of the volume and the rate of change of the radius. And so that's two derivatives that I hear there. So what we have here, um, it gives us some information. It says that the volume of the snowball is decreasing at a rate of two cubic centimeters per minute. I'm gonna write that information down. DV, DT, the rate of change of the volume is decreasing. This calls for a negative. When something's getting smaller, um, we, um, one convention, and that's the convention I will use, is to make it negative when something's decreasing in size. It's equal to two cubic centimeters per minute, okay. And um, then it says, how fast is the radius changing when the diameter of the snowball is 10 centimeters? So what we wanna know, this is what I have to find. What is, what is dr dt, the rate of change of the radius, at what moment in time? We're taking a snapshot of what's happening right here because it's always changing, but at this moment in time, when the diameter of this from here to here, the diameter is 10 centimeters. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say when the radius is five centimeters. This is the moment in time we want to answer these questions. Okay, we need a formula that will relate all this together. So the volume of a sphere will do, so the volume of a sphere is equal to, V is equal to four thirds pi r cubed, that's the volume of the sphere. So um, it is inside the cover of your textbook. There's some handy formulas there, um, but if you, didn't, if you didn't have it, you could look it up you know, on any math book or Google, whatever. But the fact that we're dealing with a sphere, like, oh, what's a, something that would relate this, the volume and the radius together, the volume would do. So this is the formula we're gonna use. Now we're ready to take the derivative with respect to time of both sides of this equation. So let's do that. D, dt, d, dt. All right, what's gonna happen here? All right, uh, the derivative of the volume with respect to time is simply dv, dt. All right, dv, dt is equal to the derivative over here. This is chain rule, right? So we'll say this is power. Three comes in front. So we have three times four thirds pi r to the three minus one power two times, remember radius is a function of time, times dr dt, the inside function, dr dt. Okay, so this is what we have to work with. What they told us was that dv dt was t negative two. We can plug that in, negative two cubic centimeters per minute 
is equal to, okay, 3 over 1 times 4 thirds. This is just going to be 4 pi times r squared. They said they told us at the moment in time when the radius was 5 centimeters, and so this is going to be squared, and we're trying to find the RDT. So we can solve for the RDT. So let's go ahead and do this. This is going to be negative 2 cubic centimeters per minute is equal to um, 5 times 5 is 25. 25 times 4 is 100 pi, and this is square centimeters times dr dt. And I'm, I'm writing my units so that you can totally see they're going to help me out and let me know if I'm on the right track. Let me divide both sides by 100 pi centimeters squared. All right, so we find that dr dt is equal to negative 2 over 100 or negative 1 over 50 pi. Two of these centimeters will cancel out two of these, so the units on this will be centimeters per minute. Does it make sense that the change, uh, the rate of change of the radius with respect to time would be something like centimeters per minute? It really does. The fact that this is negative tells me that the radius is getting smaller over time. So this is how you would do that problem. All right, let's move on to number four. It says, when a circular shield of bronze is heated over a fire, its radius increases at a rate of 15 centimeters per second. At what rate is the shield's area increasing when the radius is 50 centimeters? Okay, what shape? do we have going on here? This is a circular shield. So we're think, although a shield is three dimensional, we're, we're, we're imagining or not worrying about the width of it. So we're just, it's gonna, we're gonna think of it as a 2D shape, just a circle. So let us draw our little shield, only in this case, as opposed to the snowball, which was melting and getting smaller as time passed, this shield is being heated, so it's increasing in size as time passes. So that means we're not gonna be having the negatives that we saw in this one that indicate a decrease, we'll have positive values. So a circular shield of bronze is heated over a fire. So here is the circle. Wow, okay, there, I got a circle on here, that's good. Here's my circular shield of bronze that I might need to go fight in battle one day. Um, it is, its radius increases at a rate of 15 centimeters per second. Let's write that down. The radius dr dt increases, so this is positive, at a rate of 15 centimeters per second. Very good. At what rate is the shield's area? Oh, this is the question. What is, what is, what is dA dt, the rate of change of the area? When, at what point in time, when the radius is 50 centimeters? When the radius is 50 centimeters at this snapshot in time. Okay, so this is a circle, not 3D, just, just 2D is all we're thinking of this is. We need a formula that will relate the radius and the area. And so the area of the circle will do just fine. Area of a circle is pi r squared. Now, what do we do with that? We take the derivative with respect to time of both sides. Goes like this, d dt, d dt. All right, so what's gonna happen here is the derivative of area with respect to time is dA dt. All right, and then over here, the derivative with respect to time, pi is a constant, so this is power rule, two pi, r to the two minus one power times chain rule derivative of the inside dr dt. And then we have it. Um, they told us what r is at this moment in time, it's 50. And we are trying to find the ADT and they told us dr dt, we just plug in the numbers. So we're gonna say da, oh, this is supposed to be a t, sorry about that, da dt is equal to two pi times 50 centimeters times dr dt, which is 15 centimeters 
per second. I'm writing the unit so we can make sure it makes sense. We're going to say 2 times 50 times 15 is going to be 1,500 pi centimeters times centimeters is centimeters squared per second. This is the rate of change of the area with respect to time at the moment in time when the radius is 50 centimeters. All right. The last one we're going to look at on this video. Bye, y'all. Have a good walk. Love ya. Um, a ladder 20 feet long leans against the house. If the bottom of the ladder slides away from the house horizontally at a rate of four foot per second, how fast is the ladder sliding down the house when the top of the ladder is eight feet from the ground? Okay, this definitely calls for a picture. You do not have to be a great artist. If you've had me as a teacher before, you know that you don't have to be a great artist. So you're, I'm about to demonstrate that. Um, just to get, but it's enough to be able to label our information, okay? So, the situation is, I think you can probably all imagine there's a ladder leaning up against the house. You have probably actually seen this before in real life. So, here is some, here is some house with some windows and a roof, okay? And there is a ladder leaning up against this house right here. So here's some assumptions we're making. The house is vertical, okay? And so the ladder meeting up against the side of the house, it meets at a right angle. That's important to us. So uh, what did it tell us? It says a ladder is 20 feet long. All right, this is not changing. This is the length of the ladder that is fixed. Um, it says the bottom of the ladder slides away from the house horizontally. Here's the bottom of the ladder. It is sliding, like this is falling down, so it's sliding away from the house. So let's just label this side X, but we notice that it is, it's going this way. The DX DT, it's changing. It's sliding away from the house. At what rate? At a rate of four feet per second. Four feet per second. Now this is going to be a positive value because this length, the change in X, it's getting longer because it's going away from the house. Um, let's label this, this right here Y, the vertical distance Y. So if you, the, the ladder is fixed, so you can imagine the ladder falling and as it falls, this Y distance is getting smaller as this X distance gets bigger. So dy dt, the change of rate of y is going to end up being negative. Um, we know that because that's the convention we're using. When something gets smaller, we make it negative and bigger, we'll leave it positive. So right here it says, um, a ladder 20 feet long leans against the house. If the bottom of the ladder slides away from the house at a rate of four foot per second, how fast is the ladder sliding down the house? When, at what point in time, when the top of the ladder is eight feet from the ground? At the, what is, what is dy dt at what time when y is 8? This is what we have to answer at this point in time. All right, so this is our kind of picture. Let's see, we need some formula that will relate all of our values together. We have a right triangle, and the Pythagorean theorem will do very nicely. So let's write that down. x squared plus y squared is equal to 20 squared. This is a formula we can use. Um, we can take the derivative of this um, with respect to time and that will be what we need to do. D dt, D dt of this side, D dt of this side. Let's go ahead and do it. The derivative of x, remit, keep in mind that x and y are functions of time, so it's chain rule. So. Derivative of x squared, it's power rule. Put the two in front, 2x times dx dt, derivative of the inside function, plus derivative of the outside function, 2y, y goes to the two minus one power, just y, times the derivative of the inside function, dy dt, is equal to the derivative of 20 squared, but that's just a constant, so its derivative is just zero. This is the formula that's going to um, get this for us. So, we are solving for dy dt. This is what we're trying to figure out. We know y is 8. Okay, we have that value. 
We know dx dt is 4. Okay, we have that value. Oh, we don't have x, but we can figure out x because this is a good formula. The Pythagorean theorem, x squared plus y squared is 20 squared. And we can solve for x because it's at the moment in time when y is 8. So we say x squared plus 8 squared is 20 times 20 is 400. Is that right? Yep. Okay, so now we have x squared plus 64 is 400. X squared is 336. X is the square root of 336. Normally, we would say plus or minus, but minus doesn't make any sense in this case because it's a length. So x is this. All right, here we go. Let's plug in what we know. Now we know x. We have 2 times the square root of 336 times dx dt, which is 4 feet per second, plus the number 2 times y, which is 8 feet, times dy dt, which we're solving for, is 0. Let's solve this equation for dy dt. So 2 times 8 is 16 feet times dy dt. I'm going to subtract this to the other side. So 2 times 4 is 8. So it's going to be minus 8 times the square root of 336 feet per second. Now all we got to do is divide both sides by the 16 feet. What's happening here? Hang on a second. Something's bothering me. Oh, I left off one of my units. That's what's happening right here. This is another feet. My, my units were not making sense, so I was like, what's going on here? But this is a foot, and this is a foot, so this is a foot squared. That's good. Divided by 16 feet. All right. So I get dy dt is equal to, one of these will cancel with one of these, negative 8 square root of 336 feet per second. Does it make sense that this should be negative? It does, because in the beginning we said this is getting smaller. We know that's going to be a negative. So that's a few examples of how to do related rates problems. There's a few more. There's three more. We're going to do that in a separate video.